Hi guys, and welcome back to the world of tanks with the Brick Tanker Girl. Um, today it's another tank review with this fun little beast here, the British Tier Seven Five Light Tank. Yeah, it's not a light tank. More on that later. <coughs> this is the cruiser, uh, Crusader, sorry, and it served mainly in the desert in the war. It was a you know a reasonable reputation. It suffered a bit with the sand, and the uh, Sherman soon replaced it. But it was not a bad tank, partly due to that gun. And it's partly the gun that actually makes this a, a reasonable tank. It's in the war it would f it would have fulfilled the role of a um, me medium tank effectively as a cruiser flank bit of scouting that kind of thing and it had a gun that could take out any tank on the battlefield and that's the same in world, world, world of tanks that six pounder will take out anything it faces up to tier seven it'll start to struggle might need a bit of APCR or flanking shots that kind of thing but it's manoeuvrable enough to flank so having to go for flanking shots isn't an issue. It does suffer a bit with accuracy, the dispersion's a bit down but it also has a phenomenal rate of fire under two seconds I think I've got mine down to um, we'll see in the games it's, it's around two seconds which means that if you do miss you're just firing the shell. There is a negative side to that as we'll see in one of my games 60 pounds right five rounds it's not unusual to have no rounds left at the end of a game in this tank uh, I've done it in one one of the replays of I will feed one of the replays we see I run out another one I think I've got three rounds of APCR left uh, and the la last one I probably haven't got many left and I'm not sure how many I've got left in the last last game um, and the three games are hopefully going to just show different ways of playing it and what just what this tank can do none of them are mega ace tanker games or anything like that they're all above a pretty typical games about what you can get into this get out the, the, this tank now at the start I sort of hinted it's not really light it's not it's a medium but the armor is not reliable by any stretch of the imagination in fact on paper it's paper it's not armor especially the front of the turret which is one of the problems because you don't really get the ability to go hold down even though you've got great depression because you've got uh, 32 mil sorry 51 mil of uh, un sloped armor which is not a lot but she will she will bounce get her onto these sort of angles the turret the the front upper glasses becomes quite bouncy and it's surprising how often you will see shots ricochet off here um, and it's not a bad angle to angle because if it, if they hit the tracks the tracks plus the side armour is more than the front armour in fact the tracks themselves aren't much are about nearly 30 if not more so this kind of angle that you've got I'm showing here is not a bad angle for this tank um, you'd ideally want to protect this area because it's got the uh, ammo rack although I've rarely got ammo racked it's not bad for that your engine can be a bit bit weak, um, but basically it's a tank you don't want to get hit, which is what which is good because it's got a brilliant camo rating. Say so you want to camo and at least two of your crew. Uh, I've got recon just to up my view range on this tank. It's sitting at three eighty three, um, but it. You could have camo on all three. I've got six senses essential. You've got to have six senses because not being seen or getting out of the way when you are seen is what keeps this tank alive. You want to keep that gun firing and you just want to keep it firing. You'll miss the odd shot and just accept that you're going to miss shots because you've got another shell coming down range two seconds later. And basically, excuse me, don't know why I'm yawning so much. Um, it's only eight o'clock. Uh, but yeah, you just want to keep that gun firing. It's got good manoeuvrability, 
it, traverse speed's a bit down, but not badly. You can easily circle. Um, speed limit 44. The good impression's not bad. It's minus 7 at the front, which is, is, is we think, other people have mentioned this, that there should be, well, I say should be, on the earlier versions, where that hatch is, is a turret. And we think that the, the, the thoughts are that sort of war game and giving it a depression for with the turret rather than without the turret because from the sides it's minus 10 whereas at the front it's minus 7 but that does mean that if you're angling like this on a ridge line it's not a bad thing because you can use your extra depression so don't be scared to get into these kind of angles um, and that's basically the always tank you've got a very maneuverable pretty powerful good power to rate ratio tank Equipment, I always put vents on. Um, got a rammer on at the moment. I am debating putting a gun lane drive on. Um, I'm starting to notice. I've been playing since I sort of doing these videos. I pay attention a bit more, I think. And I'm starting to notice that the. Um, it's sometimes you're waiting for it to aim. Um, so I might swap that for that. Always going to use a camo net because you, you want that camo bonus. You want every bit of bonus you can get. And when you've got every bit of bonus, these things can't be seen. For, if we're firing, it's, it's, you know, up to about 300 metres with the crew I've got with camo net. At 300 metres, you can shoot stuff all day long. 250 metres, you can shoot stuff usually. Um, even close to 200, some, sometimes you will be able to shoot stuff. Um... And that's basically the result to say about the tank. We're now going to move on to three games. Um, a replay on Erlenberg, one on Ruinberg. And streets, uh, or um, urban really isn't this tank's forte. And then the final game, oh and a game on Fisherman's Bay. And I hope you enjoy them and I hope you found this review useful. And here comes the first game. So, <coughs> here we are, Fisherman's Bay. This is quite an old replay. It's a 8.9, I think, replay. Time to roll out. And decent, decent uh, matchmaking. Um, four heavies aside, one tier four heavy, three tier fives. And we're in the middle of the rack, so, you know, reasonable tier now. I do apologise on this replay. I either wasn't paying attention or something wonky went wrong because it's recorded in free camera mo mode but I don't move the camera um, but it's more about what I do than necessarily seeing what I shoot at so hopefully you'll uh, roll that let me uh, off that uh, minor indiscretion okay so here we go up to this bush now I chose this spot because I was hoping I could get good uh, sniping shots across round right the corner of this rock. Bit of extra for camo bonus from the uh, bush. Panther 38T is the first thing that comes up but isn't visible. And basically, I'm going to sit and wait. I think that's the Panzer Soffle that's just come up. Um, takes our M2 medium, we then lose a Marder at 38T, so we're zero two down. And and now I'm starting to fire on an M5 Stuart, which you can just see in E1. Um, I am actually struggling a little bit. Um, poor aim on my part, bit of bad luck, bit of RNG against me. And it takes a lot more shots to kill this than it should have done, but you can see the rate of fire. The thing's just spewing out shots and he dies. Next tank up, coming up in front of the ridge. Uh, bear in mind that Fisherman's Bay has been revamped since this. Is a M2 medium. Who takes two hits, learns his lesson and scuttles back in behind cover. So I keep looking for... Um, targets things start popping up I'm not sure what's scouting um, I'm now firing at a pair of 
um, Marders, the 38T and a Marder 2, which are up in the rocks the other side of that depression valley thing that's in the middle of this map. There's a DW2 that's coming up, I'll start taking some shots at him. See if he that bleed heavy is a DW2. Now, I don't know whether I'm getting spotted, but the principle here is correct, you know, holds very firm. Just keep shooting it from cover, and most of the time you won't get spotted. Um, you'll see a best demonstration of that in my next game, and do apologise, I don't know why I'm yawning, but I do need to get through this video done, so damage the tracks going down here. The tra tracks on this are reasonably tough. I uh, probably took a bit of a gamble there. There's the uh, DW2. And I'm moving up because everything down here has died. There's that one heavy left, which is a KV, a KV1 on largely full health, I think. And you're now going to see the manoeuvrability of this tank come right into play. I'm zooming up here, still doing 30 odd K up that hill. Um, and it's time to go circling. The tank just behind me is another of my favourite tanks. It's uh, the premium tier 5 British um, heavy medium, the Excelsior. Lovely tank. I've gone on to auto aim now um, and I'm just circling. I'm going to stop circling briefly here just because I realise he's not following me, he's concentrating on the Excelsior. And the Excelsior gets the killing hit. Scoot round. SU-85 just over this ridge, it's just taken out our Chiha. Uh, we're not going to take anyone else out. Two shots, and you can see the gun elevation. But I'm on the reverse thing, and it's got a decent gun elevation, this tank. Um, and I know, I think from XVM, I, I know where the next KV-1 is. I think one is over by the island, but the one we're after is just round the other side of these rocks. Now I've got a problem. I've got ten, five rounds of AP, five of APCR, and ten rounds of HE. And this little bit here is going to be a perfect demonstration of why you don't carry any HE whatsoever in this tank. So I'm just coming again auto aim. Uh, I'm nowhere near good enough not to auto aim in this kind of circuit situation. Concentrate and try to shoot. 40, 39%, 29% and I'm out of ammo. I don't know what's shooting at him. Um, TD, yeah, Hetzo. Hetzo or, or the, or, well, it could be one of three. Um, but at this point, there's no damage, but what's with the fire? Uh, we'll see, I've used every round of HG and he's still on 29%. He takes a hit from someone else to come through. Gives me two hits. There's the second one on top of the engine deck, and that's the end of that game. Uh, I think it was about 1,700 damage. Um, but whilst I um, did make mistakes in that game, the HE was the biggest one. Demonstrates how you can circle. I circled two heavy tanks, both of which have had enough of that ammunition that are killed. Um, you could see how. The ammo load can be a bit low because you do, to a degree, have to rely on one hit and two hits in three, that kind of thing. Here we go on to the next game. This is um, Let's go. another tier five game. Don't worry, all all these games are tier five. That ammo is 38 kilo. Past is going to be quite bloody for most of this game. Uh, and this game really does, is really about that. Um, using the um, stealth of this tank to just keep pouring damage out. Uh, I've finished this game on three rounds. You'll see now I've got 55 and 10, which is, uh, well, I'd say is the best loadout for this. Some people run it 50 50. Um, it does make things a bit more reliable when you're shooting at range, but as, you can see, as you'll see in this game, you don't need to. And I don't purposely load APCR at all in this game. Uh, I use APCR, but I've run out of AP. Searching for targets. I always 
do search targets with the turret. Um, I know that it spots 360 degrees. It doesn't actually matter where the turret is facing, but I do tell you why. Um, Covenant turret, which initially I don't spot, and then I spot the church. I don't know why I go for the front of the church on the side of the top. where actually loading APCR wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea. But just to keep spamming your targets at that range. You've got to remember that was out to, I think, about 500 metres. Um, and again, we're out at 500 metres here. So nothing's going to spot us. I mean, nothing will spot us even if, even if we were driving um, the biggest, most stealthy tank on KB2 or an SU1 or something like that or a target. Um, but you can see a bit of damage to this T1 Heavy. Admittedly, he's got his side to him, to me, which helps a lot. I should really have laid that sh those shots aim a bit more, but I've got the targets. Don't get shot in the head so he scribbles into cover. And there you can see the MX-38 demons with people in front of me. Not the French, uh, colleague. T28 trying to be a bit brave here in the middle there, ours. Um, you can see the KV1's got the dirt gun on. And here you can see that you can penetrate the side of the KV1 at this range again. So you can penetrate the front of a Churchill, the side of a KV1 and the side of a T1. No bother at very, very long range. You've got to remember this is, this is pure sniping this is. Fits as well as the one five and so and that get him with the shot right to the roof. So we start we're still six five down. Um and I can't remember this game actually ends in win or not. Um it's one of the games where I didn't bother waiting for it to replay uh, to the end. Um yeah, that's a cool big guy. But it's time to shoot at. Now I'm up to six two nine damage and I'm far from the end of this game. BDR G1B can, comes into view. T49 can come in. Now, this, 189 meters. And I do have six synth on this tank. Didn't, didn't light up. He did not. That T49, uh, well under 200 meters, did not spot me. And uh, although I was back from cover, it was probably me who was spotting him. Um, really can't hit the top of that and I was probably around here that I realised I'm actually getting a bit squashed for ammo so I do start getting into a bit more selective with my shots. Yeah, I do start getting into a bit more selective with my shots. Yeah, I do start getting into a bit more selective with my shots. So I'm done 17 rounds. And it's about here that I decide, right, it's time to move. I've, I've done all the work I can here. The AMX 38T is still with me. Um, and I think there's a reasonable game, but we're 8 7 down, and someone needs to try to do something. And we're 8 8 down, and take the little battle in the bottom corner in K3 is just finished. Um, it's like Churchill 1 just popped up. I was originally going after the BDR, but it spots the, spot the Churchill. Don't immediately spot the. Um, and as you can see, we can go and shoot inside the Churchill with no bother at all at 400 odd metres, but we would have shot the front of that Churchill as well. And I get hit for, by the Covenant, which did spot me, but that was probably not fully in cover and at very close range in a tank that's got a decent view, respective view range, so. Trade a bit of health for. Damage and I'm down to 11 rounds of ammunition. 
trying to be circumspect and trying to take out the BBR as few rounds as I can. Um, I know that I'm going to take some shots to see I get no damage hit off the BBR there. And it's down, but he does get extra heat off of me, and I'm down to nine, 9 health. Remember that T49 that I shot earlier? Knocked him down to 34 health? He's going to demonstrate why you should preserve the health of your tanks. Or at least, uh, you know, uh, oops, he's got me. And they can see it, you know, 6 cents, so, you know, it went. Was, he, did, I, he didn't lie, doesn't light up when I hit. So, 1730 damage. Against heavies, all manner of tanks, if I take all the heavies in the game. This is the last game, and this is one that I played on oh God, Erlenberg just tonight. Uh, it's an early game for tonight. I would just play a cup, try and get a respectable game in a higher tier game. You will notice this is tier 7. Um, so, bottom tier, if at bottom of the tree really the worst matchmaking you want in this tank. You've got rake about heavies, two arties in the game, so that's useful, I might be able to help those, and that's what I'm sort of thinking at the start. There's a bit of cover down here, it's not brilliant cover, but any cover will help. I've got the camo net. Um, although it doesn't seem to be loaded on this game for some strange reason. I just noticed it's not showing up on the uh, bottom, so I might not have had the camo net in this game. Didn't affect things anyway. So I sit down here. Now, initially I don't seem to have the camera in the right mode, so I do apologise if I managed to mess up two of these replays, but never mind, you'll get the uh, picture. Comments the first thing to see up. Now what I'm thinking here is trying to spot stuff coming up the H23 area, um, so that people have an idea what's coming into the courtyard. Um, but at this point, I realise I can't. Nothing's going. Everything's gone round the back and in. I decided to move into. Oh, okay. I can probably find my way through here and go through. You know, I expected something in this area to pop up by now. I'll take a risk. I don't want to get spotted. Um, Tiger one pops up, but he's not going to spot me where he is. And now I'm just going to try and scroll through. I'm trying to use cover so that anything on my right or behind me can't see me. I'm being a little bit cautious here. Because what my plan is, is arty hunting. That M5 Stuart, not interested him at all. Um, yeah, he might go after our arty, but hopefully the 25 will get him. Um, and there's a couple of heavies on the right who might get him. So, there's that comet. So I'm going to scoot around this corner. Come up. Six cents goes off, which I know is a different six cents I've got on this three is a really recent improvement. I think, right. Six cents gone off, that's because the artist got. Oh, sh sugar, that hurt. And what I hadn't really spotted initially was that T34. Bit of target fixation. But look how many bounces I take off this T34. I've taken a hit off the M41. Ricochet, ricochet, no damage. Remember what I was saying about that angling? This tank will bounce. I'm just out DPM and taking out a full health T34 in a situation where effectively I was on half health from the hit from the M41. One penetrating it from that T34. Two kills so far. And I've got uh, 8, 27 damage. Remember what tier this game was? Yeah. I seem to remember on bottom tier, on bottom of the pile, in an alleged light tank. <coughs> and up to 980 damage and three kills. And some spotting damage, probably. Actually, I'm not sure about the spotting damage, but it doesn't really matter, it's not. <coughs> this is about showing what this tank can do, even when you're faced with, um, you know, not being top tier. So here I'm just looking to try and basically come in behind the enemy and um, get some rear shots in some stuff, flanking shots, that kind of thing. Exactly what you want a medium to do at the end of the game. This T-34 pops up, 
Lovely. Side shots, one into the engine deck, second into the engine bay, bang, dead. Four kills, 1,050 damage, and KV-1 popped, so I was going to scuff behind the KV-1 then. Um, I just don't go for this combat, so I do go a bit mad here, but there again. I'm not a bit worried, I've done the job. I get one shot just before he kills me. 1,134 damage. In a tier 5 game, 4 kills, including a tier 6. Damage to tier 7, medium. In, you know, bottom tier game. And that's just what this tank can do. You know, the gun's got enough penetration to do the job. It's manoeuvrable to do the job. It can relocate. It's got the camo when you need it. And if you're lucky, it'll bounce shots. Or if you get the angling right. Um, and as you can see, it's the extreme angling on this tank that works. It's not... It's one of the few tanks that you can... Ang you, you, you almost have to angle wrong to angle it right. And with that... I will wish you all good night. I hope you like this uh, review and I'll look forward to the next one. Night folks.